Hello dear family, thank you for tuning in. Your host, Genevieve, greets you. Today we will learn about to be prepared to confront the enemy, prepare for all-out psychical war against the Luciferians. Also we will be talking about what to do to receive sanctification, another ministry of the Holy Spirit. And of course, you will realize that it is essential to be close to grace at the moment of prayer. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our everyday prayers. We must learn how to pray in the spirit and not in the flesh. If you are here for the first time, you are welcome to subscribe and do not forget to ding the bell to receive all notifications. Please let us know your thoughts in your comments and do not forget to like, share and subscribe if you did not do so. With your comments and likes, you are serving the kingdom of God. The more likes we have, the more people we reach with these necessary and uplifting teachings for all believers. If you need prayer, you can leave a comment or email us. The email is on the about page for business inquiries. Are you prepared for all out psychical war against the Luciferians? The battle lines have been drawn. It is evident just who the enemy is now. They have outed themselves. Mark them and mark them well, because among them are likely to be some of your family members and closest friends. Luke 12 verses 51 to 53. Many of us are already thoroughly engaged in spiritual warfare with the powers of darkness, and the rest of the church has already been defeated and is in retreat. They are analogous to a cowardly deserter when the going gets tough. Anyone too frightened to pray against the enemy certainly will never have the fortitude to stand and fight the enemy face to face. They will lay down like cowardly dogs and present their belly to the wolves. Why? because the church has been gelded and is no longer putting on the armor of God in warfare prayer. Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18. God's people will not pray against the enemy because they are afraid. They do not know who the enemy is or how to stand against him. Prayer is an offensive weapon, not a defensive one. Like the disciples who slept while Jesus prayed on the night before he was arrested, the church today is fast asleep incognizant of the gravity of the situation. Just as that night in the garden, this time in human history is of monumental importance and a crucial prayer time. In these days just preceding the tribulation, we must fall to our knees and seek God's will in our lives and the earth. Matthew 26 verses 40 to 41, And he cometh unto the disciples, and found them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Most of the preachers are too scared of Satan and have made a pact with him. Leave me alone, and I will leave you alone. The gutless wonders who have sold out to the enemy will not preach hell, fire, and brimstone because they don't want to upset or frighten the flock. Know this. They will be upset and frightened when Satan and his demons come for them to drag them kicking and screaming into the pit. Those of us who take a stand, preach the truth, are taking all the fire from that enemy, and the constant barrage is weakening the front lines. The rest are cowering in the trenches or have retreated, running like a scared dog with its tail between its legs. Why? Because they do not know the power of the name of Jesus Christ, the power of his shed blood, or what the Bible says. Most do not know how to use it as a sword, Hebrews 4.12, a weapon against the powers of darkness. These are dangerous times. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against the demonic forces behind the evil people. We will not win the spiritual battle with guns and ammo. We will win the fight in prayer, praise, worship, and fasting. However, there are many things that we will face, some known to us now and some unknown. You need to know the right kind of prayer. It is not praying to millions of false gods of manufactured religions. Prayer to the Father, Romans 14 11, in the name of Jesus with praise and worship. Be wise, be prepared, everyone should have some protection. You could find yourself attacked by wild animals. You could find your home being invaded or your children threatened, or any number of situations where you will need a weapon a physical weapon to defend yourself, at a time when it is required, or to come to the aid of others, does not violate God's law or His will. No, we do not live by the sword, we live by the Word of God. When Jesus knew He was about to be arrested and the world was about to erupt into perilous times, 
he first reminded his disciples that he is their provider, and they will lack nothing. Then he told them, if they did not already have a sword, to go out and buy one if they had to sell their cloak to get it. Luke 22 35-38 And he said unto them when I sent you without purse, scrip, and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. This world is coming to its conclusion. The world as we knew it is over. Things from here are going to become crazy. You are going to see something that will cause you to fear. God said that these times will be the worst that ever has been or ever will be. Men's hearts will fail them for fear of what they see coming. Luke 21:26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Even God's children will be faced with the onslaught of fear. But remember, when you feel overwhelmed, do not allow fear to overcome you. Call upon the Lord. He is our rock and our refuge. Praise the Lord whenever you find yourself in a fearsome situation. Sing His praises. You will be amazed at the power of praise. God inhabits praise. When we turn our fear into praise, God moves. Arm yourself, first and foremost, with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, but also prepare to stand. God's Word says do all you can to stand and then stand. Ephesians 6.13 reads, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, stand, therefore. There was no punctuation in the original text. The man added the divisions and punctuation. I believe it should read this way. Having done all to stand, stand. In other words, do everything that you can do in the natural according to his word, and then stand in faith, believing. Remember, though we are spiritual beings, we live in a fleshly human body. We are in a spiritual battle, but still living in the natural world. If you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are not a child of God. You are spiritually blind. The Bible assures us that man is indeed a spiritual being made in the likeness of his Creator. Thus, we read in Genesis 1.27, And God created man in his image, in the image of God created him. Male and female created he, she, them. We were created to be like God, to have specific attributes of God, but not be God. The following passage makes that clear. Genesis 1.28, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moved upon the earth. Source. While living on this earth, you still require food and water. It would be best if you still had some sleep. You still struggle against sin. It would be best if you still had a safe place to rest and clothes to keep you warm. And you will find yourself in situations that require tools to protect yourself and those you love. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 16 But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he has spiritually judged all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For whom hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. When a poisonous snake immediately threatens to bite you or your child, will you not kill it? You will if you know it is toxic and can destroy your child or you. It is time for the silent majority to rise. It is time to stand for truth, morality, freedom, and protect the innocent. The line is drawn in the sand. Which side are you on, brothers and sisters? Do you stand with God or with the satanic plans? Brothers and sisters, having grace in our lives is very important to renew our minds and the continued growth of our spiritual lives. Romans 12 verses 1 to 3 reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, 
which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that good is and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to as God hath dealt with every man the measure of faith. God breathes out all scripture and is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3.16 When you read a passage of scripture, be sure to read with discernment and wisdom from above. You can also ask yourself, what does this passage tell me about the nature of God who provides redemption? And what does this passage tell me about the nature of humanity that requires redemption? What does this text tell me about God? And what does it tell me about me? It is simple like that. Both questions will ultimately point to grace, the grace of God that covers all our sins and failure and enables us to serve Him. Next time you're reading your Bible, ask for discernment. With confidence, let us draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrew 4.16 When I read passages like Romans 12.1, which reads, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, some of us thought the Bible is telling me to do something to be holy. But what I missed in this passage was the phrase by the mercy of God. It's by God's mercy that we are made holy and acceptable. Through grace, the Holy Spirit, the mercy of God Almighty, we can receive sanctification. The rivers of living waters cleanse us continually when we allow the Holy Spirit to do so. We only need to be open and let the Holy Spirit do the work of sanctification in us. So remember, our being holy and acceptable to God isn't a product of our merits, but His. Christ's grace gives us the right to stand before God. Let's pray. Heavenly God, Eternal Father, we recognize you as our only just, strong, and jealous God who visits the parents' wickedness to children until the third generation of those who hate you and show mercy to thousands, to those who love you keep your commandments. We present ourselves before your presence with thanksgiving. We recognize that by grace we are saved and that all the bad things in our lives you turn into for good. Lord, on this day we ask you for protection over our homes and each. Please help us understand the spiritual world and be alert. We love you, Lord, and are grateful for what you have done in our lives. We forgive our enemies. Please, Lord, we ask your grace to help us forgive genuinely from the bottom of our hearts. We request your forgiveness for all our sins, and we put on your armor, your heavenly clothing, to be able to resist all the fiery darts of the evil one. We clothe on the shield of faith, the breastplate of justice. We take the sword of the Spirit, that is your word, in our right hand. We belt our loins with the belt of truth and put on the dress of peace. And so we stand and stand firm against everything that may come against our lives and our family's life. Heavenly Father, you are the God of peace, which surpasses understanding. When my mind is full of the world's cares, please calm my anxiety and soothe my fears. Give me your peace in my heart, mind, and soul. May I approach every part of life with the assurance of your peace. I have nothing to fear when you are with me. If you are for me, who can be against me? Please remind me of your presence and your power. Cause your precious face to shine upon me. You have promised to give wisdom to anyone who asks. As I walk through life, give me wisdom and understanding in every decision I make. Guide my thoughts and direct my steps. When I experience uncertainty and confusion, I can lean on your limitless wisdom. I want your divine Holy Spirit to work in me as a lamp to my feet and a shield to my mind. Please help me think clearly and calmly and act with confidence and wisdom. Please help me to glorify you in everything I do. Dear Lord, as I read your word each day, enable me to discover who you are and who I am in Christ. Please open my eyes to your amazing grace. Father, thank you for being merciful to me. 
I know that I am a sinful person who has been saved by your grace, not by my merits. In a world that seems to be constantly on opposing sides, we want to be in a place of peace and unity. Today, Father God, I pray for me and my home. Dear Father, you created the home as a refuge from their world. There we find comfort, support, and understanding. It gives us a glimpse of the unconditional love that you have for each person. Sustain this home, dear God. Bless it and keep it so that all members of this household may come to know grace that you have given us through Christ, our Lord. A home cannot function if its members are not on the same page. How can we all walk together lest we agree? Therefore, it helps us to come together for the goal of unity. Give us all love and compassion for one another, so that this family might serve as an excellent example for others. Let our spiritual life flourish, that our bonds may grow tighter in you. Your word never returns to you empty. It is effective and active in our lives and our households. You speak life into our homes, and you stir your people's spirits. Continue to speak truth into our hearts. Stir us up to love and support one another, coming together around your most holy word and zealous for good works. Lord God of increase, the family's happiness, is crucial to its health and well-being. A family flourishes and multiplies better when their familial life is happy. Hear this, Lord, and take this into account. Let happiness and contentment arise in our home. Heavenly Father, the unforgiving heart is like a raging fire. It consumes everything around, regardless of its value. Nothing can come near it without being burned and scorched by the flames. There is an unforgiving spirit in my family that has not been extinguished. It creates strife and heartache. It destroys any semblance of peace. Therefore, put out this horrible fire through your living water. Let it put out every unforgiving heart between us so that we can forgive one another, as you have forgiven us through Christ. True and lasting peace can come only from all sin's clear and cleansed conscience. Where the conscience is tormented, there can be no peace. Our sins are forgiven because your Son shed his blood on the cross for us. Our slate is wiped clean. I ask that you extend this same forgiveness to all my family. Let the precious blood of the Lamb blot out our sins so that we may partake in true peace. Abba Father, you have said that the world will know your people by the way that they love one another. Your people are not of this world, but your kingdom where love is the only language. Thus, to live peacefully and productively, let an abundance of love break out in this home. Let it be all we know so that we can do nothing but serve one another as you have helped us. Peace is forged not through anger, malice, and envy but by loving kindness. You did not come to condemn the world out of anger, but to save it by your abundant love. Therefore, let us mimic you in our relationships as a family. Let this household run on loving kindness, shunning all forms of hate and contempt. Help us to reflect your blessed image all the days of our life, that we may live at peace with each other. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen.